We are fortunate here as we sit with Brandon Fugel, uh, President and CEO of Colliers International, probably one of the finest commercial full service real estate outfits in the country. And uh, he's invited us up to visit his office and take a look at the digs around here, which I gotta say are pretty fabulous. But more than how nice the building and the structure is, there is no um, greater attribute that we could probably give Colliers than the people that are inside those buildings. From Brandon to Lou Kramer to others that I know, Linda we've met, uh, Lena who we're working with on a conference uh, here in the next couple of months. Um, a building can only get you so far, it's the people that take you to the next level and we're fortunate enough to know Brandon and he has certainly been a champion of the chamber, as has Mark Eaton, as have others, Lou Kramer. Um, and we were, as we visit uh, with Brandon about the great people that have crossed our paths, um, it's not lost on us at the Utah Valley Chamber that Brandon himself has been a champion of Utah Valley. And uh, you were born and raised in Utah Valley, is that right? Yeah, I've lived my entire life in Utah Valley in Pleasant Grove, in fact, other than two years where I served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Hawaii. I, uh, I spent a couple of years there, but I, you know, my heart and soul has been Utah County. I've uh, graduated from Pleasant Grove High School and uh, you know, our, my family, my ancestors settled in the 1860s in Pleasant Grove and we've been so fortunate to be a part of the, the community and to see such incredible change. What are some of the principles that you have espoused, evolve, and even promote in your life? In fact, I bet if, if, if we were to dig into the DNA of Colliers, I bet there's a lot of familiar, at least similar, values between Colliers and Utah Valley, and I hope the Utah Valley Chamber. Name a couple principles that you feel are those that we pivot to. Well, business is about relationships. Yeah. It all comes down to relationships. And, and honoring those relationships and focusing on not a transactional point of view, but a relationship-oriented yeah. yeah. point of view will help us, I think, hold true to, to those principles that have established us so well. I think, uh, in not to sound simplistic, but the golden rule, treating others mm -hmm. as you'd want to be treated and fostering in the community a collegial, a collaborative, Mm -hmm. type of environment and, uh, and culture is going to set us apart and, and continue to help, help us, I think, gravitate in a market where we have, we have challenges that we're encountering. Um, I think public-private partnerships are going to be more mm -hmm. critical than ever. One of the X factors that we have in Utah that differentiates us from the rest of the country is our public-private partnerships engagement. We've had a very engaged yeah. governor's office of economic development, and I have to give credit to you and the chamber. Mm -hmm. Our chamber of commerce is first class and second to none when it comes to community outreach yeah. and really elevating not only the discourse, but bringing good people together, you know, for the right type of thought leadership and problem solving solution based approaches to really what we're going to have to what we're going to have to address as as we do have some challenges on the horizon yeah and and those are kind words but i know that that we that we drink from the same uh, vat of Kool-Aid and that is it's on the three p's it's principles it's our people and yeah. it's our partnerships and um, that's what's gotten us this far <clears throat> and i think that's what'll take us to the next and that's right what do you feel for you personally, Brandon, is left undone. What do you have yet to, 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 to check off on a menu or a bucket list, as it were? You know, I, I feel like I'm just getting warmed up. Yeah. And I, I really mean that. Yeah. Anyone who spends time around me will realize that I'm just a 17-year-old stuck in a 48-year-old body. And uh, that nervous energy that really drives me and, and really feeling perpetually unemployed, you know, in that, you know, you're only as good as your next project. You know, once a project is concluded, uh, you're virtually unemployed in my business, and you have to fill that pipeline. You're only good as you're only as good as your next deal. Right, right. Um, and and I think, you know, with that in mind, I look to the future as as really my best years, and uh, and I look ahead to what lies in store for Utah Valley. Utah Valley 
is in the middle of a, a very special moment. There is a, a, a constellation of activity. Yeah. And even though we've had a, a challenging year this past year, you know, in the midst of global crisis, we've seen our community rise to the occasion. We've seen the courage, the generosity of our business leaders, of our community leaders, and really just everyone, your neighbors reaching out. Um, and, and I think tapping into that and leveraging that incredible goodwill, that momentum, and that positivity that has really helped our community grow together mm -hmm. through this will, mm -hmm. will, I think, serve us well into the future. I mean, we see projects across the entire market in every municipality that will change the skyline forever, uh, either on the drawing boards mm -hmm. or under construction right now. There yeah. are more yeah. cranes dotting our skyline right now than I believe ever before. Yeah. And if you compare Utah and the Wasatch Front to the rest of the United States right now, I mean, we, you know, we're in a position where we're seeing, uh, you know, unmatched economic development mm -hmm. growth. Mm -hmm. We're seeing low unemployment, yet we still have a young, highly educated, dynamic workforce. You know, the greatest concentration of multilingual speakers, yeah, potentially yeah. in the world, right here. And, and the opportunity to leverage all of that to create something really special. But I yeah. think you have to be careful not to believe your own press. Yeah. And one thing yeah. that concerns me is, is I, I think that we have to remain competitive. At the end of the day, if we're not competitive, and I think the Utah State Legislature needs to remember this, mm -hmm. you know, if we wouldn't have stepped up with the right type of competitive incentives, yeah. Yeah. we wouldn't have had Micron. And you look at right, how much, right. you look at right. the Intel Micron Dream Venture, and you know, that facility, that project has been a beacon of economic prosperity for decades. I mean, it's been the leading exporter in Utah. You think of you know, how much effort that took in order to, to cut that deal, and then you look at the host of other companies up and down the Wasatch Front that have made economic decisions, business decisions to expand here versus other markets. And I think it's very important that we remain competitive and that we don't take that for granted. I, I worry. I, agree. I worry that our legislature at times doesn't understand that we have to constantly be sharpening the saw and being progressive and, and really sticking our neck out there yeah. or all of this could come to a halt. As fast as it has, has benefited us and has come upon us, that great blessing can be taken away mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. And we, you, we have to be very careful not to, uh, not to believe our own press so much and to, mm -hmm. to remain quick, nimble, entrepreneurial, and competitive and, and really work together to create the right incentives. The economy grows because of incentives. You remove incentive, mm -hmm. you remove the American dream, you, you, you remove you know, those key levers, those key you know, bullet points that really drive decision mm -hmm in the C-suite and you risk undermining all of that. Yeah. So if you had three ingredients that you needed to put together to have an ideal vacation, what are those ingredients? Maybe, it, maybe it's a Mountain Dew, a uh, diet Mountain Dew. What are three some ingredients. three ingredients for a fabulous vacation? Pretentious luxury, 24-hour <laughs> room service, and warmth. Yeah. A warm yeah. climate. Yeah. Your favorite restaurant? The Five Alls in Salt Lake. Oh, really? Local um, here. It's, it's a restaurant that opened in 1969. My parents yeah. went there right after they, they got married, and it's still operating to this day. It's kind of a, an old English manor type environment. It's a five course meal. But I also in Utah County, as a yeah. shout out to Utah County, uh, you know, La Jolla Groves is a favorite, the Tree Room, yeah. and Vander's Keep. I don't know if you've been to Vander's Keep in yeah. Pleasant Grove no. at Evermore. Phenomenal. Okay. Phenomenal. I put it up against anything. Abby Cox and I would have voted Black Sheep. So if you haven't been there, try well, Black Sheep. It's very trendy. Yeah. Um, everyone is talking about yeah. it, and for good reason. It's, it's, it's the latest and in innovative cuisine brought to downtown Provo. Yeah. And just look at that, yeah. that incredible environment and yeah. diversity. Favorite Broadway musical, play, movie? Oh, Bro Broadway um, first. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Is that a Broadway play? It was on Broadway. Oh. How and it, it, it made me cry. It brought tears to my yeah. eyes. Second would be um, 
Dear Evan Hansen. Yes. Very good. Very also, good. Also, I bawled, I cried like a baby. Yeah, yeah. I was so, and I didn't even have a tissue, and I just yeah. looked like a mess. <laughs> um, I've seen Les Mis recently at the Sandy Oh Hill. my gosh. Isn't that amazing? That might make my list. Of, Better than Broadway. Yeah. So yeah. the Les Mis uh, you know, show at, uh, at the Hale Theater in yeah. Sandy yeah. was world class. Yeah. The talent, world class. I yeah. put it up against any, any Broadway performance. Yeah. And you look at the ingenious stage. Oh, yeah. Set up yeah. and and all of the mechanics of that and you know they have got this eighty foot pit, and the special effects and everything yeah. that combine to create such an it, an incredible experience. I've never ever seen anything quite like Les yeah. Mis at yeah. Hale Theater yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. You, you, we're lucky to have good community theater, and we're lucky to yeah. have Hale in Utah County. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's something on the horizon, perhaps. Yeah, I hope so. I hope um, they get out of their little spoil, their no, little jewel box and no something. No spoiler alerts <laughs> yet, but I think there are some good things that lie in yeah. store for, for Utah Valley. I hope so. I think that uh, we are just the tip of the iceberg for what we will see in the next 20, 30, and 40. And we have a lot of moving parts to make this go well, but we have a lot of good people. And for one, the Utah Valley Chamber is really grateful for the friendship, partnership, uh, to uh, Brandon Fugel, to Colliers. They really have been over the years um, a, a champion for the Chamber. And I'm going to say plural, the Chambers of Utah. And uh, spending a few minutes with you, Brandon, has been an absolute delight. Our staff always looks forward to hearing your stories and being a part of the, you talk about the culture. Um, you really do encapsulate all that is good about Utah right here in your own firm. You can feel that. It's just, it's a part of the pulse. Yeah. And, 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 and vibe of, of your business. You've done a great well, job. You. You've surrounded yourself with great people. That's and we're happy, we're happy to count you among uh, our friends uh, and partners at Utah Valley Chamber. Well, thank you so much. Looking forward to many years ahead, yeah. working together to, uh, to champion business and our communities. Yeah, thank so, you. Thank you for having me. You betcha.